स्मार्ट हो रहा है इंडिया जैसे इंडिया में बना एलिस्टा स्मार्ट एलईडी टीवी विद वर्ल्ड क्लास क्लैरिटी एंड अमेजिंग फीचर्स So you have been with Ghana throughout WCPL. So how is your connection with the team, and how have you built that connection with this team? I feel like the people around are really good people. Um, they want the best for the players that they have in the team. So I feel like I'm very comfortable with with the staff and the franchise itself. So I think uh, going forward, it's going to be even a better franchise. Absolutely, and. Of course, with the likes of the fastest bowler in the world, Shabnam and Smith, Susie Bates, Sophie yeah. Devani, and the likes of your team. So, how has it been playing with these players, and what all have you got to learn? Yeah, I mean they're amazing. Um, the way they think about things on the spot and on the field, it's, it's so good to know that you know um, after so much years you learn so much things, and um, they're still able to pass knowledge on to all of us as well. So for me, it's all about taking the learnings that I'm getting right now and you know using it. Uh, I guess whenever I have the opportunity to do it again for West Indies and whichever team I play for. Of course, you are an off spinner and Shabnam Smile is like a lethal fast bowler. But again, both are bowlers. So what's that one thing in bowling that you have picked up from Shabnam Smile this season? I think for her, it's all about um, being clear on what you want to do as a bowler, regardless if you're bowling spin or pace. And I feel like she's very clear on what she wants to do as a bowler, and it really works for her. So maybe having that clarity is going to help, you know, um, and working with plans. And of course, like, how has it been in the dressing room with the foreign players coming in, and the West Indies players there in the dressing room? How have you all gelled up, and how is the environment right now? To be very honest, they are really fun people. They always make it through. Ishmael is such a funny person. Like, I mean, she makes jokes for everything. Uh, Susie is very energetic. She's always dancing around, and I think Divine is trying to work on our accent at the moment. So we got a lot of fun in our room, and it's you know it's it's really good to see that we're able to mingle and mix and have conversations with these people, and you know feel like we're we're one team. And. You say it like they are making jokes, and you all are having fun. So, is, is there any one particular incident that you would like to point out that this happened in the dressing room and everyone was laughing? Uh, so there was a a match we were having. Uh, I think Samuel Badji was commentating. Um, I think the volume on the TV in the dressing room was down, and uh, so Fidi Vine started to comment it in a local accent, and it was so funny to see. You know, she's trying to make um, all. She's trying to do the pitch report as he was actually doing for us, and it was such a funny accent that she's trying to she's trying to portray. Actually, she was she was actually getting some of the words done well, so it was it was amazing. At the same time, it was fun to hear her say. And talking about another fellow off spinner in your team, Shyanka Patel, who has been there in the news too. So how has it been with her? Like, what all you both have talked about? I think she's an amazing, amazing off spinner. Uh, personally, seeing her front hand, she's able to spin the ball so massively. Um, I think I'm not, I'm not even as close to, as as big as playing the ball as the way she does it. Um, what really stood out for me is the way that she, she's also very clear about, you know, what she wants to do. And even when I was having a um, couple of tough games, you know, she actually came to me and. She told me, you know, um, you've done it for so long, and there's, you know, there's no doubt in her mind that, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you do it again. And for me, it's, it's all about being clear about what you want to do. I think she's really, really an amazing um, person and bowler. She's gonna do wonders for India, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. And you two in the last game picked up two wickets for 16 runs. So, what went right for you in the last game? What were you doing right? How was the pitch helping you? How did it all pan out in the last game? I feel like, you know, I really sat back and realized that uh, sometimes what others tell you don't work, and what you really you want to do works. And again, I guess it's about being clear uh, about what's working. Um, Assessing the pitch, 
and I felt like uh, I've been I've been bowling to what people keep telling me to do, and you know it's really a comeback though for me. Yeah, I've been out since the World Cup, and I I think I just wanna you know come back and have fun and relax myself. And I have to put all that pressure on me. I think I started off a bit too uh, on the edgy side, and um, I think I'm really coming down. I'm coming back. I'm coming down. I think Ishmael is really you know in my head talking to me. She's become one of my good friends here. And, I think they want the best for the players in the team. Uh, Patel as well has really been in my area, you know, she's been talking to me as well. So I feel like we've really built a relationship as friends now, I could say. And they are really supportive of, you know, the things that they know I can do as well. So for me, it's all about just being calm, having fun and being clear about what I need to do for the team. Yeah, absolutely. And it must be nice when such a legendary bowler is coming to you and helping you out. As I said, she's such a fun-loving person. Like you would never think she's such a great of the game if you meet her, you know, just outside the corridor. So, but um, I'm really grateful to have them around, and I'll say them because I, as I say, but Tala's always been, you know, very supportive as well, and I'm really grateful to have both of them around. Now let's go back to the start of the journey. Let's talk about your childhood and how did it all start. Just tell me, when did you just start playing cricket, and how did it all start? Uh, for me, it was a, it was a helping out my uncle. He used to play for uh, a high school um, that I actually went to as well. Um, I used to ask true balls to him, and he he used me as a like someone who could just throw down, like a throw down coach. But I was just throwing balls. I didn't know what I was doing. I was actually very young. Uh, I was five years old when you know I was just doing this and. I think gradually he showed me a couple of things that, you know, it, it became fun. It became like a hobby and I started to play like backyard cricket uh, on the on the streets with some of our neighbors would come and we'd have like a whole competition just among us. And then from there, I guess the talent grew. Um, I started to play softball cricket for my primary school. And then from there, at the age of 15, I started to play hardball cricket and yeah, from then I've been playing hardball cricket. I represented my national country at 19 and then Western Egypt probably a couple of years after that. So you said like at 15 you started playing hardball cricket and before that you were playing softball. But at what yeah. age did you have that realization that yes, cricket is the sport I need to take seriously and I need to make a name for myself in this sport? Honestly, I really never thought about that. Um, it just came along with the way I was pr progressing um, throughout that couple of years. At 15, 16, I was able to get onto the national team trials and, you know, I've heard a lot of people say, not you, got potential, you know, she's going to do this, she's going to do that. And I felt like, for me, I just wanted to, to take wickets. And taking wickets at that point, I felt was easy. So I guess because the level of cricket was now growing and, um, you know, once you're able to to put the ball on his thumbs, you're able to get wickets because some of the, sometimes girls are not learning and you know uh, for me it, it was it was about you know just playing sport it was just about you know getting involved in meeting people kind of getting out of school kind of thing but um needless to say i did do civil engineering so i had a backup anyway i was actually trying to you know find my find what i really wanted to do at that point and then at 19, when I was eight, when I had to actually pick between um, school or cricket, I felt like, you know, cricket was actually taking me places. I debuted for Trinidad and then Wesley's called me the same time to come and have trial. So I kind of, you know, made that decision that I'm going to put myself in a position where I can, you know, play for a bit longer. So I did that. But at the same time, like you mentioned, you were, of course, like thinking about studies to academics and then cricket too. But wasn't it getting tough for you balancing both of them at the same level? Yeah, I mean, it's it's always a tough thing. Um, I did actually qualify to a certain level um, in engineering. So I did complete what I had set out to do um, initially. Uh, obviously, didn't get to finish the actual um entire courses but 
I am qualified to a certain level. I can still work in the industry. However, it did get, take a toll on me as engineering is not where I can sit in in a class and, you know, just learn. Engineering is where you have to go out in the field and, you know, make time and do practicals. And for me, having to travel out the country as often as we had to because of, you know, having camps and the team getting together in different countries. It was quite difficult to, you know, get in to in that class. And obviously online classes couldn't really help but an engineer. I don't think, you know, it's it's it was working for me. So I felt like it did take a toll on me and I did have to choose. Um, so but it wasn't as terrible as I thought because my institution was, was very um, understanding. They gave me the time off, you know. But I think having to extend and extend it was it was def- definitely a um, a bit of challenge. And when such things take such a big toll on your mind and it becomes a challenge for you, of course, there's a lot of support coming into, like you mentioned, your institution. So how was the support from your family, like? throughout your childhood when you mentioned like you started at the age of five helping your uncle how has the support system been yeah look i i feel like i never really had a problem with the support of my family and i still have that um my mom is an amazing person she never challenged anything that you know my siblings and i would want to do and i and i honestly believe that because of you know getting that freedom and you know because we really wanted to she wanted us to live our lives uh, i guess because they grew up in a way that you know um, it wasn't as fortunate of you know to have you know your own things and she wanted us to to be able to have to make choices and you know and obviously she would guide us if she thinks we were going down the wrong way and uh, i was i was really appreciated for that and support is still there throughout my other family and you know they they really want us to do well and uh, that's i guess that's what keeps us here smart ho raha india jaise india mein bana alista smart led tv with world class clarity and amazing features 